currency exchange rates determination and forecasting this is the first reading in economics it is a very long reading and i have broken it up into four parts in part one which you are listening to right now i will go over the introduction and give you the basic foreign exchange market concepts so this is section one in the curriculum and then section 2.1 in part two i will go over forward markets and this is a relatively short segment so most of what you will see up to here is material that you have also seen at level one then in part three i will go over the long-term framework for exchange rates this corresponds to section three in the curriculum and this is a relatively long segment it covers purchasing power parity various other parity relationships and so on so this is actually critical and i think from an exam perspective you need to be on top of this segment and then finally sections four through nine in the curriculum are relatively short and these have been bundled together in part four so all this is part four of my video lecture series the introduction section one is relatively short and essentially just sets the context and it says a few rather obvious things the first obvious remark in this segment is that exchange rate forecasting is very difficult so just in case you didn't already know that you know it now second both fundamentals based models so these are models like purchasing power parity and so on as well as non fundamentals based models such as technical analysis have limited predictive power and finally there is some good news that if you follow some systematic strategies there is a chance of earning excess returns and some of these systematic strategies such as the carry trade are discussed in the reading let us now talk about some basic terminology in the foreign exchange market and we will understand this through a example say we have the following spot rate 1 euro is equal to 1.3646 us dollars so if you are given this information the first thing that you need to understand is that the currency of which we just have one unit so in this quote where we have 1 euro equal to 1.3646 us dollars the euro is the base currency because this currency has only one unit so whenever you see the term base currency immediately you should think that we have one unit of the base currency the other currency then is the price currency in this example us dollar is the price currency so essentially what we are saying is the price of 1 euro is 1.3646 us dollars so here us dollar is the price currency the spot exchange rate is the exchange rate that is in effect now and this will be contrasted with forward exchange rates which we will talk about later so if we are told that the spot exchange rate is 1.3646 that means that today or currently 1 euro is worth 1.3646 us dollars in the fx markets typically you will also hear the term t plus 2 settlement this means that if this is the rate being quoted today then the settlement at this rate will happen in 2 days so t plus 2 means now plus 2 days bid offer now for any given currency pair so in this example euro us dollar you are typically going to see two numbers one is called the bid the other is the offer the bid rate is the rate at which a dealer 
an FX dealer will buy from a client or the rate at which the dealer will buy. So the way I remember this B for buy, B for bid, and this is from the perspective of the dealer. And offer is the rate at which the dealer will sell to the client. So whenever you look at a currency quote, there will be two numbers. So for example, over here, we see both the bid and the offer. And notice that the offer will always be higher than the bid. So if you go to a FX dealer in this example, the FX dealer will buy euro from you at 1.3646. And then if someone else comes to that dealer, the dealer will sell at 1.3651. This spread between the bid and the offer is how the dealer makes money. Now, in terms of the currency convention, you need to keep in mind that there are lots of different currency conventions and you need to be very careful given the context to understand what convention is being used. The convention in the curriculum is quite straightforward. So the way this exchange rate would be written as is as follows usd euro is equal to 1.3646 slash 1.3651 so in the curriculum the we are we are basically expressing the exchange rate as a simple fraction so usd over euro where the currency in the denominator is the base currency. So the other way this is written is USD slash Euro. So this is the convention that is used in the curriculum. Now some other conventions are as follows. You might also see Euro colon USD. Now in this convention, the Euro is still the base currency. So in this convention, the base currency is written first. You might also see uh, something which is very confusing, which is Euro USD, where the currency written first is the base currency. So the point here is that there are several different conventions and you have to be smart enough to figure out which convention is being used in the curriculum as I mentioned earlier, this is the convention where the first currency is the price currency and the, the currency over here is the base currency. Okay, now coming back to bid offer, as I've already mentioned, this is for a currency pair. In this example, US dollar euro is my pair. The bid is how much the dealer will buy for and the offer is how much the dealer will sell for. Now notice that we have a spread over here. This spread in, in, in the example that I've taken from the curriculum over here is 5 pips. The pips represent the difference between the bid and the offer. So in terms of this currency it is expressed in 4 decimal places. So if you take the last decimal place you have for a 0.3646 and 0.3651. In terms of the last decimal place, we have a difference of 5. So we will say that the spread here is 5 pips. Another example is over here where we have the bid being 1.3648 and the offer 1.3652. Here the spread is 4 pips. Now coming back to bid offer what is it that uh, what is it that helps us determine how wide the spread is and you need to know these four points from a exam perspective so the bid offer depends on the uh, the bid offer spread depends on the currency pair the when you have currency pairs that are heavily traded such as euro usd then the spread is relatively low for currency pairs that are not as heavily traded the the spread will be more time of day what this means is that 
if the major FX markets are open, then the spread tends to be relatively low. So the major markets are New York, London and Asia. So this being the Japan, Korea uh, part of Asia. Now, when all these markets or when at least two of these markets are open, then the spread is lower. Market volatility. If if FX market volatility is relatively low, then the spreads are low. If the market volatility is high, then the spread is relatively high. Size of transaction. The spread is high if the size of the transaction is relatively large and the spread is low if the size of the transaction is relatively low. Dealer client. So dealer refers to a FX dealer. So these would be large financial institutions such as say JP Morgan, Citibank, Barclays, etc. So these are these entities are foreign exchange dealers. A client might be a, a entity such as a large mutual fund. So if a large mutual fund wants to hedge its FX risk or it wants to trade in a given currency, it will go to a dealer. So this interaction would be called a dealer client interaction. The spreads in the dealer client interaction are generally a little higher than the spread in a dealer dealer interaction. So a lot of FX activity happens between FX dealers. This is called the interbank market. The spread in the interbank market is relatively low compared to the spread in the dealer client market. So this is the core terminology that you need to know. And these are concepts that we are going to apply in subsequent slides. Now let's look at the arbitrage constraint on spot exchange rate quotes. One basic point is that the bid can't be higher than the current interbank offer rate. If this happens, then a third party can easily make a arbitrage profit. Say the interbank USD euro rate is 1.3649, which is the bid and the offer is 1.3651. Now, if you take a hypothetical and unlikely situation where the bid being offered by a given dealer is higher than this offer rate, let's say that the bid is 1.3652. Now, what is the arbitrage opportunity here? The arbitrage opportunity is that the third party can go to this interbank market and basically the third party can buy euro for 1.3651 since in offer means that in the interbank market the the offer rate is 1.3651 so a third party can buy at this rate and then sell at this rate so bid over here means that in the interbank market, a dealer is willing to buy at this rate. So the third party, which is making an arbitrage profit here, is going to basically buy at this rate and then sell at this rate. So if such a situation even arises, it will be arbitraged away very quickly. Key point from a uh, exam perspective to remember is this arbitrage constraint that a bid can't be higher than the current interbank offer rate. If this does temporarily happen, it will be arbitraged away. The next point is that the cross rate bids posted by a dealer must be lower than implied cross rates in the interbank market. Or the other way of putting it is that the cross rate offer posted by the dealer must be higher than the implied cross rate in the interbank market. So for starters, just memorize this comment. And to properly understand this, let's talk a little bit about cross rates and implied cross rates. 
Let's say that you are given these quotes. USD Euro is 1.3649 slash 1.3651. So remember, this is the bid. This is the offer. And you are also given the this rate. Japanese Yen USD is 76.64 slash 76.66. Now, the implied cross rate for the Japanese Yen Euro is the cross rate that is implied by these two exchange rates. So let's try and calculate this. The Japanese, the Japanese Yen to Euro cross rate is equal to the Japanese Yen to USD multiplied by USD to Euro. Now, if you recall from your very basic algebra, when you multiply these two expressions, the USD, USD cancel out. So effectively, you are left with Japanese yen divided by Euro, which is, which is what we were looking for anyway. So the point is that the implied Japanese yen Euro cross rate is simply the product of these two exchange rates. But we have to find both the bid and the ask. And the way you can remember this is the Japanese yen to euro bid is equal to the Japanese yen to USD bid multiplied by the USD to euro bid. And the Japanese the Japanese yen to euro ask is equal to the Japanese yen to USD ask or actually the term I've been using is offer. So Japanese yen to USD offer multiplied by USD to euro offer. So this should be easy to remember. When you are calculating the bid, it's the product of the bid and the bid. When you are calculating the offer, then it's the product of the offer and offer. So in this particular example, Japanese yen to euro bid, we would take Japanese yen to USD bid. Japanese yen to USD bid is 76.64 multiplied by USD to euro bid which is this number 1.3649 so you just multiply these two numbers and you will get the implied uh, bid rate between Japanese yen and euro and to come up with the offer rate you simply multiply Japanese yen to USD offer which is this number 76.66 multiplied by this number 1.3651 and note that as you would expect the offer is going to be higher than the bid which is the way it must always be so now let's look at a slightly more complicated example where we can't simply multiply the two exchange rates to come up with the implied exchange rate so assume you are given this information usd to gbp and the usd to euro exchange rates and you are supposed to find the implied gbp to euro cross rate so gbp to euro cross rate can we simply multiply these two? Let's see what happens when we do that. So USD over GBP multiplied by USD over Euro. Notice that when you multiply these things don't cancel out. You have USD squared over GBP times Euro, which makes no sense. So these two are obviously not the same. So what must we do? Let's look at it a slightly different way. GBP to euro can be written as follows. You can write this as GBP over USD multiplied by USD 
over euro. So if we have this convention, then we can simply multiply out the USDs cancel out and we will have GBP over euro. So let's now look at what we are given. So GBP USD, we need USD to be in the base currency, but here GBP is the base currency. So how do we take these numbers and change them so that we have USD as the base. The way we do this is quite straightforward. So if we need GBP to USD, if we want to make USD the base currency, all we do is the following. The bid is simply the reciprocal of this offer rate. So the bid becomes 1 over 1.56 four six and the offer is simply the reciprocal of this number so the offer is one over one point five six four four notice that when we take the reciprocal of the smaller number we get a larger number over here and that maintains the relationship or that maintains the fact that the offer has to be higher than the bid so let's take this one step further now to calculate the GBP to euro bid so GBP to euro bid we must have GBP over USD bid so what's the GBP over USD bid that is this number over here so we'll have 1 over 1.5646 multiplied by USD to Euro bid. So the USD to Euro bid is simply 1.3649. 1.3649. So you can do the math and you will get the GBP to Euro bid. What about the GBP to Euro offer? This would be the GBP to USD offer rate. So GBP to USD offer rate is this number over here. 1 over 1.5644 multiplied by USD to Euro offer. So USD to Euro offer is this number. 1.3651. So you multiply these two out and you will get the GBP to Euro offer. So fairly straightforward, I guess the key thing to remember between this example and the previous one is that if your convention is not a simple one where you can simply multiply out the two numbers, you need to take the reciprocal and when you take the reciprocal, then the bid is the reciprocal of the offer and the offer is the reciprocal of the bid. So do this example on your own. The numbers have been taken from the curriculum, so you can look up the final answers from the curriculum. To properly understand this discussion, let's go over example one from the curriculum. Example one has five questions and this is critical and from an exam perspective, it is essential to go through these curriculum examples. So you are given the rates, the spot rates for several currency pairs and these are rates in the interbank market. You are asked what is the implied SEK euro cross rate. So how will we do that? So SEK to euro. Let's see if the quotes given here or the conventions used here are such that we can simply multiply out. So SEK euro. Now we have SEK USD and we have USD Euro. So these are the two rates that we will need to use. So this can be written as SEK over USD where USD is the base currency multiplied by USD over 
euro. So this would be a simple multiplication. Note that we have the SEK USD. So here USD is the base, which is what we want. And we also have USD euro. Here euro is the base, which is what we want. So here we would simply multiply out. So on the bid side, we would have a product of the two bid numbers. So we would simply have 6.8 739 multiplied by 1.4559 this would be the the bid and the offer would be the product of the two offer rates which would be 6.8741 multiplied by 1.4561 this would be the offer. So you can do the math, but note that this is simple. And this is exactly what we, the concept is exactly what we just talked about a short while ago. Next, Japanese yen to Canadian dollar. So Japanese to Canadian. How do we write this? So let's look at which which exchange rates we need to consider. Obviously, we'll need this one, Japanese yen, USD, and we'll need a USD Canadian dollar. Can we simply multiply these out? No, we cannot because notice that USD is in the denominator in both cases. In other words, USD is the base currency both here and here. So you cannot simply multiply this out. What we need to do is the following Japanese yen over USD multiplied by USD over Canadian dollar. So is Japanese yen to USD given? That is given. So here USD is the base, which is what we want. But what about USD to Canadian? Here we want the Canadian dollar as the base. But what's given here is the US dollar as the base so we will need to take the reciprocal japanese yen to usd for the bid is simply this number 80 81.87 so remember we are doing the bid first multiplied by usd to canadian so usd to canadian remember we need to find the inverse over here to find the inverse for the bid we need to, to to find the usd canadian bid we need to get the reciprocal or the inverse of the offer so we will multiply by 1 over 0 0.9546 so that's the bid what about the offer the offer we will start with 81.89 81.89 multiplied by the reciprocal of this number so multiplied by 1 over 0 0.9544 so you do this math and you get the offer now let's talk about the concept of triangular arbitrage triangular arbitrage happens when the when there is a discrepancy between the cross rate and the implied cross rate so in this case the rate between japanese yen and canadian dollar is 85.73 slash 85.75 let's also look at the implied cross rate between the japanese yen and the canadian dollar so the the implied cross rate which we just calculated in the previous example is as follows it is 85.76 which is the implied bid and 85.80 which is the implied offer so these so these so this is the implied cross rate now what about the cross rate being given over here the cross rate given here is 85.73 and the offer is 85.75 
triangular arbitrage transactions refer to the set of transactions that you can conduct to make a arbitrage profit or a risk-free profit given these rates. Notice that the offer rate over here 85.75 is lower than the implied bid. So to make money what you must always do is buy low and sell high. This is actually rule number one of finance that to make money you buy low and sell high. So if you want to make an arbitrage profit obviously you need to buy over here which is the low price and sell over here. A bid price means that this is the, uh, so this means that this is how much the dealer is willing to buy. So the dealer is willing to buy that means you can sell at 85.75. So what is the what are the set of transactions that you would you would do? Note that the base currency that we are talking about here is the Canadian dollar. So whenever we talk about buying or selling it is in the context of the base currency and the price of the base currency is in Japanese yen over here so Japanese yen is the price currency so the buy low would involve buying so you would buy Canadian dollars at 85.75 85 yen and over here you would sell Canadian dollars at 85.76. So on a, for each Canadian dollar, you would make a arbitrage profit of 0 0.01 Japanese yen. So what are the key points over here? The key point is that to make an arbitrage profit, there needs to be a inconsistency between the implied cross rate and the cross rate Spe specifically the example we've seen here is that if the implied bid is higher than the offer rate in this interbank market then you can make a arbitrage profit and to make an arbitrage profit you buy low sell high in this example you you as the third party that's trying to make an arbitrage profit buy over here and sell at this price and make an arbitrage profit of 0 0.01 Japanese yen per Canadian dollar. Now this a lot of students find this rather confusing so you will get this with practice so practice as many questions as you can on this at the very least make sure you understand this example very very well. Now another example, so this is part 4 of example 1, Japanese yen to Canadian dollar, you are given this rate, what are, what are the triangular arbitrage transactions? So as we calculated in question 2, the implied cross rate in the interbank market is 85.75 which is the bid and 85.80 which is the offer. Now, if a dealer offers you this rate, 85.74, which is the bid, and 85.81, which is the offer, what can, can you make an arbitrage profit here is the first question. So, notice that what you can do from the dealer is buy Canadian dollars for 85.81 yen. So that's how much you will buy for. Now can you make an arbitrage profit here by going to the interbank market? The answer is that you cannot because you are buying for 85.81. So if you buy for 85.81, how much are you selling for over here? You are selling for 85.76 in the interbank market so that clearly is not a arbitrage profit in this in this situation the dealer is giving you a bid 
quote of 85.74 this means that the dealer will buy from you at this dealer buying from you means you can sell to the dealer for 85.74 so if you can sell to the dealer for 85.74 how much are you buying in the interbank market for in the interbank market you would buy for 85.80 so here again you could not you cannot make a uh, arbitrage profit because in this market you would buy for 85.80 and to the dealer you would sell at 85.74 so here notice that again you cannot make a uh, arbitrage profit so the answer here is that there are no transactions uh, that you can perform to make a arbitrage profit and this actually is what typically happens in the market typically the situation is that you will not get any quotes that will allow you to make a arbitrage profit even if this does happen it happens for a very short time and any possible profits are arbitraged away very very fast and now the last question from example 1 so we are given the following transactions transaction 1 by canadian dollars against the us dollar at 15:30 london time now the significance of this time is that this is a time when both the london market and the new york fx market is open so a lot of trading so you need to understand your basic time zones to understand when the major markets are open and if you look at your curriculum there is a small exhibit in section 2 which shows you when major markets are open so the major markets being tokyo london and new york so this is a large transaction at a very active time the next is canadian dollar versus krw this is a relatively uh, so this currency pair is not traded as much as canadian dollar to usd so the spread on this transaction is going to be relatively high and then finally canadian dollar to usd at the same time but the transaction amount is low compared to the compared to transaction 1 given the proposed transactions what is the most likely ranking of the bid ask spread from tightest to widest so tight means that the spread is low wide means that the spread is high under normal market conditions so where will you have the tightest spread the tightest spread will be transaction 3 because of three reasons a the timing is when both the us market and the london market so new york and london are both open so so that means spreads are low the currency pair is heavily traded and the transaction amount is relatively low so the spread is going to be low so this 3 is going to be the tightest next will come 1 because again we still have a heavily traded currency pair at a time when london and new york are open but this but the spread will be not as tight as 3 because the transaction amount is relatively large so keep this in mind when transaction amounts are larger that makes the spread a little wider and finally the widest spread will be for canadian dollar kr and krw because this is between a currency pair that is not as heavily traded so you have finally you have the widest spread for two